What's up, everybody? Patrick Kirby here from Do Good Better Consulting. Welcome to another episode of our guest expert trainings. Uh, today, we're going to talk about something that the nonprofit world doesn't talk about very often, profit. Uh, so I am very excited to have a very special guest, uh, Matt Bruns from Profit Pros. Matt, how are you today? Outstanding, Patrick. Thanks for having me on. I love it. All right. So uh, we're going to talk about profit. We're going to talk about why it's not a bad word. We're going to talk about why it's uh, a misconception to not want to make money in the nonprofit world, right? We're not paupers. This is an abundance mindset thing. This is all combined together. But first, let's figure out who the heck you are and why you do what you do and what Profit Pros is. So Matt, take it away. Who are you? What do you awesome. do? Who do you yes. work for? Let's go. Awesome. Hey, so I work for a company called Profit Pros. Um, and I'll just take a step back. So I, uh, I have experience in the corporate world. I used to work for uh, a large corporation um, and I wanted to uh, go down to the, to the place where the rubber meets the road in small business. So what, what we do is uh, Profit Pros is, a, is an organization that, that supports small business and nonprofit business um, with their finances. Oftentimes, the, a lot of small businesses don't have the resources or the capability of understanding their businesses, specifically with expenses. Often, yeah. And businesses are always focused on revenue, right? Oh. Um, revenue, revenue, growth, growth, growth. Nonprofit, you know, they're, they're focused on their budgets, but then again, why is their budget changing other than, you know, possibly funding? Things are changing all the time and, and budgets increase or decrease, but understanding what f expenses uh, are, really, are really happening and causing their budgets to change is something right. that we do. So we, we dive down, dive deep into expenses to find opportunity to, to have healthier finances. And I, I think that's, that's the other thing too. Like everybody has an expense line, everybody's got a revenue line, and everybody is so worried about what the next year's gonna bring and what their budget's gonna look like. And so really I love the idea of a company coming in and saying, listen, here's a bunch of stuff you might be wasting money on, here's a bunch of stuff you probably haven't looked at very often. And this money you're going to save that doesn't require you to cut a budget or anything or cut anything can be invested back into programming and services that the nonprofit uh, has. Right. Right. So, you know, a really good example would be if you take a look at, you know, you, you and your wife, or at least I do with, with mine. And I had, so I had somebody come in and say, Matt, this is what your finances look like. Uh, an expense look like over the last four years, I would be astounded um, on what I spent money on right. over that period of time and what, what those trends are. So think about it, an organization when there's about, uh, many decision makers that are making decisions on expenses and it gets, gets put into a bucket and you don't necessarily understand you know, what the, the overall outcome of that expense is. And over time, those expenses tend to increase uh, budgets increase, but why are budgets increasing in certain you know buckets or departments when there's opportunity uh, of being more efficient in those particular departments? Right. Yeah, I mean, we're always trying to fundraise more. Um, right. We're always trying to expand. We're always trying to. Do... Now, the other thing you said, which is really interesting, is that the small business, small nonprofits. This is where I think um, talking about profit and expenses and some of these line items that maybe we don't talk about a lot is super important because there's not somebody, there's not a CFO, right? There's not uh, in, in, you know, a, a funding committee that's on the board that is, that's, that's leaning on a bunch of different, like, that's not existent yeah. in small, medium-sized nonprofits. And so to have a, to start thinking about this in a different way, to find opportunities sure. for you to um, uh, spend more in places that are more impactful, Sure. I mean, that's the most beneficial thing you can talk about, right? I can't, I can't say it any better than that. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, the, 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 ex, the expenses are, are something that, uh, you know, when you talk about budgets uh, specifically, you're always thinking that I think that budgets are like revenue, right? You're always thinking about in getting more fundraising, higher fundraising to do more of your mission. Well, what if you could, what if you maintain that same fundraising and you look at your expenses and you're able to do, make that, those expenses turn into something more impactful? That's right. exactly what you just said, but I think that you know there, there's a parallel between higher but higher uh, higher fundraising and you know higher revenue, and that doesn't always mean success. 
No, it doesn't. I think that's really good. And again, this, this, these conversations that we're having, like this, this you know, for-profit business, talking about the nonprofit world, uh, we have to get out of this, um, oh, woe is us uh, mindset in the nonprofit world, right? We're, we're a business. We're for, we're like a nonprofit, but we're like, we're raising money and we're spending money and we're doing, like, we don't have to pay taxes. Great. Good for us. Yeah. But we've got to start thinking like a business. And so I really like these um, guest expert trainings of people who've been in a business world to give perspective on how nonprofits can be more effective uh, all across the board, specifically though, the finances. So let's just say I have no idea anything about business. I have no idea about budget things. And I walk up to you uh, in a coffee shop and you say, ah, my name is Matt, work at Profit Pros. We help you find some, uh, some opportunities there. What's an opportunity that maybe some organizations miss or, or maybe, you know, um, the, the, the big thing that maybe people overlook when they're talking about their budget and have an opportunity to maybe find revenue that they didn't know they had before, or they're sure. wasting money somewhere. Where easy, easy one is the amount of line items that, that, uh, that a nonprofit has, um, are, you know, we just did one, uh, not too, about a week ago and there was a hundred and, 91 line items for their for their nonprofit, um, which is how do you manage that? It's 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 so difficult to manage. Um, you know, and when you talk about you know being e efficient within a nonprofit, you know, on the parallels of a business, right? You know, you want a nonprofit wants to have the best resources, have the best equipment, have the best people. Well, that takes money, uh, and able to get get those things and those, and those valuable people, you have to be good, smart with your money. And when you have 191 line items that you don't necessarily where that's going, it's very hard to get the best of the best. Um, it's hard to be, it's very hard to be productive. Um, and, and you know, those things are increasing. So every year we identified that there's at least five or six line items that are increasing every year. We look back and that's, and that average, well, reducing even that by, by 10% of those line items, at least have a little bit more of accountability and visibility of where your money is going. So right. that's the first thing is the amount of line items, very hard to manage when you have a ton of line items. I used to joke around uh, working very closely in the health and human services industries where I used to joke uh, where somebody would say, hey, well, what does your organization do? And I would say, well, let me tell you what we don't do because it's a shorter list and then we'll just start there and work our way backwards. And, and I think that's really a big big issue because you can lose track of expenditures when you have so many things to pay attention to. And, and the other thing too, is we're not talking about cutting resources or people, right? right. We're exactly. allocating, we're finding where the waste is yeah. in order to put it where your program is and your right. services are. So you don't have to cut those right. we're sort of shifting over like, well, we, and we're not talking about counting pencils. We're not talking about counting uh, paper clips. Like that's, I think people get very confused and very defensive when they talk about budgets. Like, oh no, we need all six paper clips. You can't count those six. Like that's not what we're talking about, right? We're not talking about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're, what we're talking about is, is what we, we are looking at four years of financials. Um, and we're able to, to look at the trends of those expenses over a period of time. And what our program does is it, it, it's 40,000 calculations and it's able to, to show uh, where there's, there's percentages of, of where your best years were and what you spent versus what your budget was. So if your budget is, you know, if your budget is, is, is decreasing, well, you need to find a way to then decrease your expense. Or if it's increasing, how can you, your budget is increasing, how can you uh, be more productive with those dollars? Yeah. This is a way for you to be able to go do that. Um, we're not talking about paper clips and pencils. We're talking about, you know, <laughs> trends over time that are, are not visible um, by the human naked eye. Yeah. Um, the a program that is, is very, very complex. And uh, it, it's something that, you know, we have never found an organization that we have, that we have, uh, that we have supported or serviced that has not found uh, an, an opportunity um, of, of, uh, of, of really helping out with their expenses and their finances. Specifically, you know, on average, we find a uh, 9% of, productivity per business. And of that 9%, um, we can put 5% back into, uh, toward their mission. So yeah, that's, it, that's the best. Like if you, I mean, we're talking about state budget cuts across the board, you're yeah. talking like a one, maybe even a 2% increase. 
raise that by three, all of a sudden you're in business, right? I mean, there's, there's organizations that haven't had, you know, pay raises in a couple of years. And if you can find revenue in your expense, I mean, that's, this is why we need to concentrate on this stuff. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's super important stuff, man. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's great. And you know, when you talk about, uh, when you, when you are, when the budget started to increase, you know, that, that can also affect the culture of an organization and become, and it becomes more strained. So how do you continue to retain, uh, those, those people within your organizations? Right. This is a way for you to be able to do that. And it's yeah. and really, you're, and I, I want to reemphasize that you don't have to increase the funding to be able to find right. opportunities within your expense to, to put toward your mission or put toward the causes of, of helping your business or helping your culture. Right. Your, yeah. Business. Yeah. I mean, w work at it from both ends, right? Raise as much money as possible be as effective as possible without, you know, being the, being the woe is me. We can't spend money on anything kind of bit. Right. And I, and I think you just, you just hit it on the, from a culture standpoint too. And I think labor um, and in just people costs, is so expensive nowadays. I mean, it's with healthcare and with benefits and uh, overtime and just people who, the hiring process alone, if you get a hiring, if you hire wrong and you're in a nonprofit role, yeah, yeah that's setting you back a ton of money. And so maybe that, you know, if, if you're looking across the board at normal expenses, d does labor pop up? ever like as, as like sort of one of those giant red flags and, and what, what in that labor cost is something that nonprofits right now could like just, Hey, they're going to open up their budget right now. Sure. They can look at labor or they can look at a couple of items. Like what can they look at now that they could just impact or, or, or seize to like, Oh man, that's an interesting thing here and here and here. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's a great question. So if you look over a period of time, uh, and you look at retention and how you know everything happens in a bell curve of when there's opportunity of of when labor seems to be the highest. It's generally in the first quarter because there's ton of t turnover sure. in, in all business to include nonprofit in the right. after the holidays. Um, and and so thinking about that in the terms of expense or finance, how do you spend time on on providing you know giving raises or how do you help with the retention uh, focus within your business? Um, but you know, labor, you know, is, is a, is like you said, is extremely expensive, uh, you know, even touching on the healthcare piece, healthcare is going up. We all know that that's, that's one of the huge challenges with nonprofits, especially if, uh, they're not getting, um, if, if their funding is, is not increasing to the same pace, which in most cases it's not, this is a perfect way for, uh, nonprofits to be able to, mm -hmm. you know, find opportunity within their business to then pay for the increased healthcare costs. Just, just that in alone. And it is, is because the end of the year, everybody's super stressed out. Uh, nonprofits have a, have a um, not so nonprofits in a certain sectors have the end of year turnover, right? Sure. Uh, new year, new job, right? Yes, that kind right. of thing, right? Uh, some, you know, when we, there's a, you know, we've got uh, in in the sort of, sort of the North Dakota uh, Red River Valley here, one of the largest giving days on uh, in the region is in February. And right after that, because it's such a stressful fundraising time, end of the year, plus into this, people just kind of take a, a deep breath and then they exhale and get another job too. So you've got that first quarter explainer yeah. pretty, pretty well done. So yeah, taking a peek at the end of the year and seeing what you can do uh, to reinvest money back into retaining costs to keep people happy, keep people in there because it's so expensive, mm -hmm. especially to hire nonprofit folks, mm -hmm. to find great talent for your nonprofit so expensive to get it on board, very much more effective to keep them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one of the things that I think it's, it's important to point out is that, you know, every nonprofit is different. And what we're not doing is we're not comparing you to, or a nonprofit to another nonprofit. We're comparing yes, yeah. the nonprofit to itself. Yes. So if you're funding, if you're, if you're, if you're funding, cycle is different or you have big events and you find something specifically within labor or there are certain things throughout the year that that cost more money well that's going to be that's going to be you know we we, we know that um we, we we're not looking at industry standards we're looking at how to improve self how to improve and look internally and you know i think that sometimes it's it's uh a lot of times i should say uh, the organizations or leaders are afraid to know or confirm the things that they that they have a hunch on or they don't want to find out what they don't know yeah. uh, or don't want to know. 
Uh, this is a challenge that this is a, a way for you to improve and become, uh, you, you become better and more efficient. Right. Um, and it, so it's, it's uncomfortable, but really we, we, we focus on, we're not judgmental. We're, we're here to support you to be more efficient and be more productive as a, as a nonprofit business. I love that line where you don't compare others. It's something that I think nonprofits do a lot, right? They see, you know, uh, somebody raising a hundred million dollars, um, at Penn, I just literally saw Penn State's uh, Alumni Foundation just reached a billion dollars. They had a billion dollar wow. campaign for campus work and alumni and scholarships at Penn State. That's silly money. Yeah, it's, silly, it's silly money. But like yeah. you as a nonprofit that maybe has a budget of $100,000 mm-hmm. can't go around saying, well, we're not Penn State, therefore now we're not going to give any money, right? You have to roll with the air of like, no, we do great things for this and that's what we're going to raise and that's what we're going to do. And I think that's a wonderful statement where if you come in and you're comparing your budget and you're comparing your, your notes on labor or cost or this, this, and this, benchmark it against yourself, right? right? Benchmark your fundraising against yourself. Benchmark your expenditures against yourself. Don't compare apples to apples or apples to oranges even because mm-hmm. it's not every nonprofit is different. And recognizing that I think is a really important cause, even internalizing it. Right. We're going to try to do the best we possibly can raise the most amount of money that we can. We're not going to get in a, you know, our, our, you know, underwear in a bunch, sure. just kind of compare to somebody else. Cause you're not, you're, everyone's unique and different in their own skill set. Well, or in a perfect world, you're, you're increasing your fundraising right. and you're being, you're using those, those fundraising dollars in the most effective, efficient way possible. Right. And, and it, you know, it's naturally not possible if you don't look at your finances and know what, where they're going. Um, right. And I would tell you that every, there's a lot of QuickBooks is a great, we, we take QuickBooks and we put it on steroids. Um, yeah. There's nothing on the market that does what we do. Yeah. Um, I think that's important to know, you know, if you're, if you don't have a CPA or you don't have, you know, a, 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 a controller, or even if you do um, and they do a very good job, this system is not, our program is not something that they, they have the, they, they can do on their own. Um, right. And, and, and a lot of them are part time and a lot of them are, you know, yeah. are, are assisting uh, in yeah. this sort of stuff. And, and I think that's another thing where uh, I think nonprofits really get into a worry wart system about hiring somebody who has the talent to fill that they don't. Yeah. Um, whether it is, um, whether it's an executive, whether it's a fundraiser, whether it's whatever that is, they always want to do the bare minimum sure. and they don't want to sort of reinvest in like that's, 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 Again, that's that scarcity. If we don't spend it, it we don't I really worry about it. That reinvestment into why it's so important to sort of pay attention to budget and pay attention to talent, pay attention to some of these things, that's really critical, I think, to grow. An- another one of those bud- line items, right? So you're looking through your budget and you're saying, well, where can I cut? Where can I do? What, what are the things that kind of stand out? Um, I've always been fascinated, even in the budgeting process, on the idea of miscellaneous expenses. Ah, that's, that's it's a, like the giant like dumpster of everything that we can't define that, I mean, it's always growing, right? You don't know where this expense goes. I mean, I even do it in my expenses for my taxes. Like, what is this under? Is this under like a business expense? I'm like, eh, it's like miscellaneous. So right? you think about, yeah, you think it's, it's amazing how uh, virtually every business has this and if you look at it over time, uh, it starts to build and yeah. think about those dollars that could be put back to the mission. Uh, right. It's absolutely, it's astounding. There, and, there's a, and it grows and it grows and it grows right. because it's an easy way to dump. Like it's, it's it, again, it's not that you're looking for a way out as an organization. That's not what you're doing. It's just, you have so many other things to worry about. Right. right. And, and that's really what we're talking about. But to concentrate on your business model and concentrate on your expenses is not, uh, it, it's not to, you vilify yourself for like dumping it into miscellaneous. You just don't have the time to do it. Right. Sure. I just ask ah, for it. It's in miscellaneous. Yeah. But it grows. Right. What are some of the craziest things that you found in miscellaneous across the board without of course, mentioning business and what, what nonprofit and what business it is, but what's the craziest thing you're finding in miscellaneous expenses that you as a nonprofit can immediately go. Yeah, I should probably not 
I should probably not do that anymore. That's a good question. I, I would say it's, it's tough to say what, what that is because, again, every nonprofit is different and they have a different personality. So I think that what, what's safe to say is that it, it's across the board on, you know, whether it's a, um, it's, it's a, it's a Halloween party and they, and they spent money on costumes, um, which was, you know, they spent a lot of money on costumes. And then every year, rather than reusing those costumes, they spend more money on it. It just, this was the, the nonprofit love Halloween. Um, that was a crazy one. Um, you know, the, the other, the other one was, uh, marketing. Um, this is spending a ton of money on marketing without a return on an investment. Um, there's a company that we, uh, nonprofit that we just did where their budget of not, uh, of marketing went up, uh, almost a hundred thousand dollars. And this is not a very big nonprofit organization went up a hundred thousand dollars in two years, but their, their, um, their business, um, uh, their, what they were selling and providing was decreasing by almost 10, 15%. So I think it was 15%. Well, those, that's a, that's a negative correlation. Um, and they need to look, then they need to take a look at, and this is what we did is we took a, like the marketing to say, Hey, the ads that you are, that you're putting in, what, what audience are they at? And, and it really helped with the conversation of, right. of, why would why are we doing this and how is this impacting our business and that's really what our model uh and our program does is it allows us to to look deeper into our business and see what you know what the cause and effect of those things so it's all across the board i think the most really the biggest is the increasing a budget in a certain department and in and, and having a negative result of what the purpose of that particular uh that that department was for so i think that's it was such a wonderful example with the marketing thing and i think we can get so uh, crazed by if we get seven billboards and do this and that, and then on top of that, we do a printed ad and whatever. Not to say that print is dead. It's not. Not to say that billboards don't help. They do. But if you are doing it with no plan, you're not going to figure that out unless you look at your expenses and your ROI, right? Yeah. It feels really good to walk in, down the street and like, hey, look at that. Yeah. Hey, look at that billboard over there. That's, that's our nonprofit on there. It looks pretty good it feels great. What is that doing for you? Right. right. What's it doing for you? And, and again, you don't need an audit to go and figure that out. You don't need um, to do all you have to look is a couple of places along your budget line. What'd you spend? How much yep. more did you make? Yep. And if you ask the same 10 people that you had before you ran that ad, who you are as an organization, if they still can't tell you, that's a, that's an issue for me, yeah. I think as a nonprofit. And there's a lot more, there's a lot yeah. more effective ways to do that. And you looking at a budget and looking at your expenses and looking at your ROI can tell you a story that you can't read yourself without no. perspective in the third party. Like, well, right. So data, debt, data, data turned into, you know, through our pro program, it turns the things into information. It takes, mm -hmm. takes your, your, your operations into information, which then gives you knowledge, which mm -hmm. then helps you make decisions. Right. And right. That, that's really what we're, we're trying to strive is help business, nonprofit business and businesses to, to understand and have visibility of their finances so they can make bus better business decisions toward their cause. Right. Uh, and that's, that's really what we, we we're doing. Um, and I would just, you know, going back to the marketing thing, you know, oftentimes a non a nonprofit or any business that's, that has a marketing plan, it's not a linear. They're not just doing billboards. They're not just no. doing ads. They're doing, there's doing many, many different um, things that uh, to drive the business. Well, of those things that they're doing, let's just say five, what if one or two of them are just not driving, right. not driving it? You need to either reallocate those dollars into the more effective where, where there's, you're getting more bang for your buck, or you need to take a look at a different, a different vehicle to, to drive, to drive that ROI. So right. that's what we are able to help uh, businesses identify. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, that's, that's uh yeah, that's such a good point. And I think, really just even paying attention to it. You know, another thing too, I, I think people get really caught up in numbers um, and they don't understand that those numbers are a way to tell a story, right? So as, as nonprofit fundraisers, we are, we are programmed to tell stories, right? This impact of this program affected this family or this community. Sure. That's the same way your numbers in a budget or numbers that you save tell a story about your internal health to your board of directors, right? So I think a lot of people get just this, this manic craze when they go, okay, now you got to go to the board and report what your fundraising did and tell that story. And you look at numbers and it doesn't compute with your 
part of your brain that's creative, right? And so how, how do we take a look at numbers to develop a story that then softens numbers that are so black and white? It, sure. it, I mean, that, that, how, do you, how do we navigate that in the nonprofit world? Because I think that we don't want to lie, we don't want to steal, and we don't want to cheat the idea of the truth from our board. Well, but, I think it's a great, a great point, right? So yeah, yeah. think about the passion of, this, of the outcomes that, uh, of the mission of a nonprofit and how telling that story, and you want to cascade that, that story, and you're prideful, and like we, we're making progress. Well, what if we had the same passion of, of that story of, of our internal business of making right. – so that we can do more of those things that make us passionate. I mean, so, so telling a story, you, you have to have good data to, to provide, you know, good and good analysis of that data to, to give information so that you can, you can make good decisions. And oftentimes, you know, with 191 line items or even, you know, half of that, how do you, how do you tell a story with that? It's, 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 it's overwhelming. It's, yeah. it's just, it's too much. And, and you're not able to make those decisions. So, we make that that hard data and we provide it into a very simple way in a way of, of charts and graphs to be able to tell that story sure. um, so that you can so that you can feel comfortable of making those those decisions uh, yeah. and that, that's really it I mean we're not we're not these, these are not complex although what we do is complex what we do is turn it into something very simple to understand so that you can be confident to talk about it and to make decisions to react to it I think that's really where I think nonprofits will feel more empowered if you know your numbers, right? I, I was always told, know your numbers. Like what's coming in? You know, we did something called a, a goal gut sheet where what, what folks are you talking with and what do you think they're going to give and what, what are you asking for, right? It's that goal gut. Know your numbers. If sure. you know your budget and you know what you're going to uh, spend and you know really kind of what you're going to raise – you can be so much more aggressively in, in the so much more aggressive in your storytelling about what your impact is because you're fully knowledgeable, right? And I always say, don't don't stop talking to people even if you don't know everything, right? But use the tools at your disposal and use your understanding of what these numbers actually mean to tell a better, more effective story out in public. People don't want to give to an organization that is teetering on the brink of disaster. Nobody wants to say, be the savior of an organization that's a sinking ship. They do want to be the savior of an organization that sees daylight or is aggressively uh, promoting or is audacious enough to put on programming and there's a path to get there. And you're, the clarity of knowing your numbers is that path, I think. I, I, uh, well said. I would even challenge and go one step further of, of Yes, we, we may know our budget, but we may not know why our budget, meaning right. how often is a budget increased over time? You have, right. you have board members, you have, you have turnover, turnover of board members, the budget is increased. Well, there, there are things within that budget that can be taken away or, or reevaluated mm -hmm. to make your budget you know, more, more effective toward your right. mission. Right. Um, so, so yes, knowing your budget is very important, but what is in your budget is, is, is what we are able to really help you find and provide fidelity on uh, so that you can, you know, s spend that time in, in, in your mission and your passion. Right. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Um, before we sort of wrap up, I love the idea of business professionals talking with nonprofits to get perspective on, listen, we're going to empower you. You're a business just like everybody else. You just don't pay taxes. Right. Um, what are some tips that I think you can bring from the for-profit world to help nonprofits sort of understand that, you know, you're, you're business players too. Like what sort of, what sort of perspective do you bring from the for, the for-profit world to say, listen, don't second guess yourself. What, what, what sort of tips and tricks can you say to, you know, own it or that you've experienced either working with nonprofits or working alongside nonprofits um, to give them sort of that, hey, you're doing okay kind of thing. Because I think we all need that in the nonprofit industry. We all need that validation that we're doing great things. Um, what sort of tips can you give from a for-profit business for the nonprofits? Sure. So I think that it's, I, I, I think that it's, it's just amazing the, the passion that nonprofit leaders have within their mission. That is something that uh, is very unique to, to nonprofit. And oftentimes though, that passion is, is jaded with, 
with fact finding. Um, and I would just say that, you know, in businesses, the way to survive is that you have to, you have to, there's an outcome to achieve. You have to be profitable. You have to continue. I mean, growth is very important sure. in a nonprofit. It's a little bit different, um, in the sense of, uh, we're not always thinking factual or thinking about, we're, we're talking about feelings. Now that's not all. I'm not, I'm not saying that's all, no. but we're, 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 we're not thinking about how are we, how are we growing? How are we becoming more efficient for the sustainability of our organization? Um, so that's, that's one point that mm -hmm. I've noticed in nonprofit. It's, it's more of a, uh, the passion is, is amazing, but sometimes it blinds us from the facts of why we are doing what we're doing. Sure. Um, the other, the other thing of, of, you know, doing good things I, as far as, uh, do good, better, um, is right. So Shout out it, your checks in the mail. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> uh -huh. Awesome. So is, is that is, I would say that, uh, the, what, what the, what keeps nonprofits going, um, is, is that if everybody had the same passion of nonprofits toward their mission that in the, in the, in the business world, the business world would be a, you know, a better place uh, yeah. to, to work. Uh, it would be, it would, people would be aligned to the mission. I mean, there's something so unique uh, about nonprofits that people are aligned and gathered in that community. And that is so much fun to see. And mm -hmm. that's why I love working with nonprofits. I love, I love hearing about what their missions are. And I, I love to be able to help improve upon those, um, you know, financially. So, you know, the positive is, is keep that passion going and, Let's find ways of, of, you know, maintaining that passion by being, uh, you know, fiscally uh, more efficient as we, as we go forward. I love that. That's such a way, that's such a nice way to sort of close uh, the conversation is that, you know, keep, keep that fire in your belly yeah. when you are fundraising out and telling your story and then look at the same token, like how do we run this more effectively like a for-profit business? You know, you have the best of both worlds and people follow you for that because they trust your judgment. They trust that you're financially uh, sound. And uh, I, I think that's such a great perspective to have to keep that fire alive, but do it with, you know, kind of looking at ways to be the most effective organization you possibly can. And you're a, you're a win-win across the board. Uh, man, I can't thank you enough for awesome. spending some time with us today. Um, as always with guests, um, how do people, so people are listening in, they're like, wow, this guy's got some stuff and some things that I would enjoy talking about. How in the heck do they get a hold of you? Sure. Talk about uh, Profit Pros and all things finance. Sure. So the way to, the, if you want more information, I encourage you to go to our website. It's www.profitpros.com. It has uh, testimonials. Uh, it has a bunch of information of how we, we do our business. Um, I think that you just find a lot of uh, uh, great stuff there. Uh, and then way to reach me, uh, simply email me at mbruns, B-R-U-N-S, at profitpros.com. Outstanding. And we will, as always with our guests, uh, drop links in the comments below so you can easily click and find. And uh, you don't have to write a bunch of stuff down, but uh, you can mentally get it right. Matt Bruns, M. Bruns. Profit Pros, uh, we'll, we'll link below and we'll spread it out throughout uh, social media. Again, if you have any questions, we'll continue the conversation uh, in the comments. Matt, thank you so much. I appreciate your time today. Your perspective is awesome. And it's not, you know, it's, again, these are not things that we talk about very often is profit and finance and some nerdy things that, you know, some of us as the, as the talkers don't like to, to address, but it's super important. And I really appreciate your time today to kind of address that with us. Patrick, you're the man. Appreciate the time. Love it, my friend. Uh, again, we'll talk to you later. Uh, look forward to the next guest expert training. Thank you, as always, to, uh, to Matt from Profit Pros. Drop in the comments. Let's continue the conversation. As always, see ya.